Hi, um, I'm Taylor Carpenter, a partner at Volk Cooperative and a lead on the CNCF uh, CNF Testbed Initiative. And I'm going to talk a little bit about our VPP enabled uh, Kubernetes and OpenSet clusters. So, um, for those who don't know, I'll give a little intro of the, this. So this is an open source initiative from CNCF, um, and it's part of the roadmap to cloud native network services, um, filling in some of the areas. Um, it would be a complement to stuff like FDIO's CSIT project, as far as doing the lower level, other projects like OPNFV, um, doing reference platform, Intel, other things. So we're doing various type of comparisons for use cases. And um, pr the primary focus right now is uh, running either on Kubernetes or OpenStack. And then we're targeting Packet as a bare metal uh, provider, as a API that you can use. And um, this is Again, part of the upcoming telecom user group, which is being kicked off this Thursday. And this will be one of the initiatives that's related to that. <clears throat> so there's um, quite a few contributors already. It's been, it was started back at uh, KubeCon um, Copenhagen. And we have folks from various projects like FDIC SIT and Network Service Mesh and other ones there, uh, NFE Bench, OPNFV. Um, various companies have been contributing, Bell Canada, Charter. Um, and our goal is that anyone could take a API key from Packet, upload your SSH keys, create an account, and then you can use the code to recreate the entire test bed. So deploy clusters, then deploy the use cases. Ideally, you could deploy other use cases if you build those out um, and run the same test, get the same type of results. So a little bit about the clusters themselves. Um, they're what you would think of standard type of clusters where at deploy time, you can configure the number of computer worker nodes, if it's Kubernetes. Uh, I'm showing the provider switch there, which is, this is the packet switch, so the actual hardware switch. They have an API that we can talk to to configure for the layer two connections. And then, a traffic generator on the outside, which is uh, right now it's primarily in a fee bench. Um, so specifically on the Kubernetes side, we're not removing the regular layer three connections, so you still have that. We're inserting uh, the additional uh, connectivity. So the way this works, a quick walk through here. So you can clone the repository, create that configuration, drop your API key, um, host OS potentially, because we're adding CentOS support that's nearly there. Right now it's Ubuntu. But you can put all those things, number of nodes, whatever you want, and then run the deploy scripts. You could deploy one or another, they're separate. So if you're just focusing on Kubernetes, that's fine. The hardware is provisioned on packet with Terraform. And then um, we have Ansible that kind of wraps most of the rest of the setup. On the OpenSec side, right now we're using OpenSec Chef to bootstrap most of that, those pieces. And then Ansible sets up a lot of the networking, talking to the packet switch, creating the VLANs and that sort of thing. That happens on uh, Kubernetes as well. And then on the OpenSec side, we install the vSwitch using networking VPP. And on Kubernetes, we deploy a vSwitch either onto the host or in a container. 
And then there's some other optimization and ensuring like the, the host OS is set up in a way to optimize um, the network connections, CPU usage, and everything else for running network functions. This is just a, a kind of a simplified view of what would be running. Um, the VNF and the CNF are, for most of our test cases, are running VPP, because we may do like an IP router or some type of gateway. And you can see the vSwitch. So this is tied in with um, networking VPP. And uh, same thing over here for Kubernetes. This goes a little bit more into some of the various software. So it's pretty similar between like OpenSAC and, and Kubernetes nodes, um, trying to keep it as close as possible where it makes sense to do so. Um, OpenSAC, this is running, all the services are running on the bare metal. Uh, same thing with Kubernetes. And then uh, on the OpenSAC side, you have that Neutron agent for configuring the vSwitch. On the Kubernetes side, we are, whether you're running it in a host, which is what I'm showing now, on this one, we've just added recently the support for running it in a container. Either way, um, we configure the stitching between to run ser uh, build the service chains um, via Ansible. At some point, we'll probably be doing it differently because we're planning on adding uh, support for network service mesh, which will help with a lot of that configuration. For right now, it's, it's um, Ansible. And yeah, again, so we've just added support for this. And, wow, that's really big. So the, the service chains, so most of the testing that we've been doing is uh, benchmark testing. And this would be on a single node, a service chain. We can do single service chains. And this is showing a snake case where the connectivity goes through the vSwitch. And that's the same thing that you can do on Kubernetes. The interesting thing, though, is on Kubernetes, you can do direct connections, or what we're saying is a pipeline case. You don't have that capability in OpenSAC right now, um, but you can do it in Kubernetes. And that means that it's going to be much faster. The throughput we've found is much faster. And this is showing multiple service chains. So this is three service chains on one node, and you can see the connections that we had before. MIMIF on Kubernetes is the default. You could use others, but that's the highest speed type of connection that we can do. Um, again, these are for these service chains we're doing, it's all VPP. So these are IP routers, whether we do IPv4 or IPv6, um, connecting all of these. And then we run NFV bench from the outside. It's going to come in to the vSwitch and then run through the chains and then loop back around. These are some results that we've seen. Um, possibly in the next few days, we'll have some new ones with some of the recent stuff upgrading to VPP 1804, uh, 1904, sorry, and um, testing. Right now we're on. We've been testing with Intel X710 and Mellanox Connect X4 NICs on packet. Um, when we're running with Mellanox, that means that we need to use the OFED drivers. With the move to VPP 1904, we can use RDMA and um, hopefully eliminate that. At that point, everything will be open source, number one, installation. And we'll see what the numbers are with RDMA. It's a quick talk, but how you get involved, if you're interested, one of the areas would be um, pull request. If you have any, if you want to recreate it, you can uh, go through and clone like we had in the beginning slides. 
one of the areas where we're really trying to get some, um, we, where we could use some help and we're trying to get finished would be some use cases. Um, if you have any interesting use cases, whether it's contributing specifications around what those would look like or existing ones. We're currently working on a VXLAN um, use case where we have a Kubernetes pod that connects to a VXLAN endpoint running on Kubernetes, uh, running on OpenStack, I'm sorry. So our problem right now is getting the GPE VXLAN tunnels functioning. So if you have any VPP experience in dealing with some of that, it's the configuration between networking VPP, VPP, and OpenStack, and then making that available. But the idea would be um, using network service mesh, the pod can say, please give me a connection to that VM over there. And it would, the agent would configure the VXLAN endpoint, connect it to the pod, and now you have a connection, which would tie in with like legacy hybrid type installations, which is gonna be good in this migration. So you wanna connect with us. We have a CNF testbed channel on Slack. There was a CNF channel that's been renamed to TUG for the Telcom user group. And you can reach us there as well as on GitHub. And again, the TUG is going to be kicked off this Thursday, KubeCon. There's some other talks and events that we're going to be at. I don't think this has um, the DDF, Design Developer Forum, and, and PlugFest. That's in Stockholm. We're also going to be talking there as we release some new stuff. Any questions? So can you comment uh, before Thursday on the, uh, the level of interest that uh, you've observed in that uh, area? I didn't hear the last part. So. As far as the interest and stuff? Yeah. Um, yeah, there's, um, I guess, a tremendous amount. The, I think the main thing is, is there going to be, what's the pathway as far as supporting that in between? Because as far as production-wise, no one can just do a switch over. So support for stuff like SROV, um, which I think we may be getting in the CNF testbed via Intel's uh, container uh, reference platform. They'll be releasing the code for that in the next three to four weeks. And they have, um, they have uh, Multis and s some CNFs and SRV use case built in and they're doing that with Ansible. And they've kind of broken it out and they've already said they'd like to get some of the playbooks and roles. And that way we can tie it in with what we're doing already. What about the user base, people who actually are looking to deploy CNFs, so not vendors? Yeah, so uh, Bell Canada has been um, talking with us quite a bit, and um, a, a lot of the different orange, and we've been talking to a lot of them. We went and talked with AT&T a couple of weeks ago, so I think that one's going to be like more of long-term type thing. But, potentially tying in with airship that keeps coming up. 